guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna be discussing about sunburn and heat stress with orchids. I've been dealing with that a bit in the past few months. Now, I made a video regarding sunburns a while back. You can check the info card on the screen or the description below. I talked about what causes it, ways to prevent it, but in a more simplified manner. You can check it out if you want to. However, today we're gonna go a little bit deeper into this subject and learn what actually happens when an orchid gets sunburned or heat stress. So in front of you we have a Vanda orchid. This is known to be a high light orchid and to be able to tolerate quite high amounts of light and even direct sunshine. But as you can see, I did manage to burn it in this climate, although in my old climate I never had something of the sorts. And to explain why this happened now, we need to understand first how an orchid or any other type of plant is adapted to withstand direct sunshine and heat stress. Now, it has been discovered that many types of organisms, not only plants, have a natural adaptation to sunburn and heat stress. First of all, you have pigments that help protect plants and other organisms against UV light. But they are not the only compounds designed to protect plants and organisms from heat. There are also the so-called heat shock proteins. Now, these types of proteins don't only protect organisms from heat, but they have been discovered to protect against cold damage and even dehydration. I'll share with you in the description below a very interesting article on this subject. We're just going to talk about the simplified version. So let's refer only to plants. These proteins are produced by plants in conditions of stress, such as light stress, heat stress, cold stress, and all sorts of other stresses. Now here's the funny thing, not all plants have the same amount of these proteins. Moreover, they don't have the same variety of proteins. If you check the article, you will see that these proteins are classified and quite diverse. Therefore, plants that are exposed to a lot of sun and heat have a wider array of heat shock proteins than other plants that do not encounter these stress factors. So this is one of the reasons why plants such as plumerias and tropical hibiscus can withstand direct sunshine and quite high temperatures without any type of problem. They can create a wider array of heat shock proteins. While orchids can now withstand the same extremes when it comes to light and temperature as hibiscus and plumerias and many other plants. But why is this? Well, because orchids never had to face these extremes in their natural habitat, so they were never forced to create this wide array and enough quantity of heat shock proteins to prevent them from getting sunburned in the same conditions that other plants can tolerate. And by the way, there is a funny sketch at the end of this video that I made, so if you want to see it, just stick around till the end. So let's go back to my little Vanda orchid here and try to explain why this year I got sunburned while in other years I did not. Well, my current environment is quite different. One major thing that separates this environment from my previous one is temperature. In the summertime, we've experienced temperature of 40 degrees Celsius and above. Now, in case you don't know how temperatures are measured by meteorologists, well, they're not measured in the sun, they're actually measured in the shade. Also, thermometers need to be a certain distance from the ground so that the temperature of the ground does not interfere with the correct measurement. Also, official temperatures are not measured in the cities, but outside, because the roads, the concrete, the traffic, all of these influence the temperature. So in the end, inside a city you can have even greater temperatures than the ones expressed on the news. Presuming though that I experienced 40 degrees Celsius, this means that the air temperature around my orchid outside was 40 degrees Celsius. Now I tried to keep this orchid in dappled light, it did not receive full full blast sunshine. However, the temperature of the air plus whatever rays of sun hit this orchid managed to overheat the leaf to pretty extreme temperatures. If the temperature of the air would have been much lower, let's say 20 degrees, this orchid might have been perfectly fine because the air and the movement cools down the leaf. This is also helped by the transpiration of the plant. Now here's the deal. In high temperatures, orchids tend to close their stomatas, particularly cam orchids, which are the vast majority of epiphytic orchids, which perform gas exchange in the nighttime in order to prevent water loss through transpiration. So what happened was that the leaves of this orchid simply got so, so hot that the cell structure collapsed. And this is a good explanation why for some people orchids in dappled light do fantastically well, while for other people in other environments, even dappled light is simply too strong and can burn leaves. 
Now in my previous video on the subject I was telling you that the most crucial moment where you need to look out for sunburn is springtime and that you need to acclimize gradually your orchids to higher and higher light. This is logical as well. In the northern hemisphere, particularly temperate climates, winter tends to be quite gloomy, the days are really short, and so orchids are not forced to produce the same amount of proteins to protect them against heat and sunburn and all of that. Also temperatures are much lower than in the summertime. Thus in springtime, when the sun gets stronger, when temperatures are higher and when days are longer, the orchid needs time to be able to create those heat protective proteins. This being said though, orchids do have a limit. As I was saying, they're not that adapted to these extreme conditions as other tropical plants are. Where is that limit? Well, it's different for every one of us because we don't have the same environment and the same factors that influence the stress. So with that in mind, when you're thinking of adapting your orchids to higher light, take into account temperatures as well, not only the quantity of light your orchids receive. If you live in an environment with very high temperatures, you will definitely be more prone to sunburns than people living in a cooler environment. Whenever you feel the leaf of an orchid gets really, really hot, that's a sign that you need to remove that orchid from that environment or from that position. And if you are one of those persons who can grow orchids outside, even in dappled light and direct sunshine, then I really envy you. I cannot, my terrace is really hot, so all of my orchids need to be in the greenhouse most of the time where they receive filtered light by this sheer curtain as you can see. So alrighty guys, I hope this was a useful video for you and I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate this video below and share it and subscribe for more videos. Thank you guys for watching, I'll see you all next time, bye! Hey Jim. Yes, Bob. I had an idea. Why don't we work on producing more heat protective proteins? Why would we do that? Well, you know, they help protect against heat and sun and all of that. It's good to have, you never know. Bob, it's not that it's a bad idea, but it's simply inconvenient. For the past 500,000 years, we've been working on a better management of excessive sap. Couple more hundred thousand and we're done. If we start working on something else, everything will be delayed. And plus, afterwards we need to work on adapting roots to very moist environments. You know, it rained a lot these past seasons. These are things we should be focusing on. Are you sure, Jim? Yes, Bob. Trust me on this one. And besides, when was the last time you saw a tree just disappear out of the sky? Okay, Jim. I trust you. <laughs> there you go. You need sun to grow strong.